How are you? Uh, welcome to the Big Data Mock Interview. And today we will be trying to replicate the second round of interview, which will consist of system design and consist of some of your uh, questions on your project and lot uh, on lot of things. Okay. So so let's proceed. Will you please give me a brief introduction about yourself, how much years of experience you have, and the work. Uh, you are doing currently and one of the work which you are really proud of one of the product or project that you have created in recent times or in past uh, please go ahead yeah sure um, so thank you for inviting me for the second round of interview Ankur so really feels so good to be here and I'm really mm -hmm. uh, learning a lot uh, with respect to the questions on what you like evaluate me on the mock interview and it's, it's really helping me uh, more I would say Mm -hmm. And uh, so about myself, so I have around like a uh, find of years of experience in uh, data engineering. Uh, so in my current, uh, so when I have to speak about my current project, so in our current project, so the objective of this project is basically to like um, uh, eliminate the existing streaming based pipeline, which is built on top of Java Spring Boot. So it was like uh, this pipeline uh, was been built like uh, too long back. So they are in a process of like a, Restructuring it and revamping it into a PySpark based uh, applications. So, mm -hmm. our objective was to like, we are basically like a streaming platform. So, when I say platform, so we are the team who like uh, uh, built this data pipeline. So, any producer team can onboard their data sets uh, and make it consumable for the uh, consumers. So, when I say about consumers, it can be a business intelligence teams or the data science or machine learning team, whoever it can be. So, previously, our consumption layer was data warehouse. But uh, later on, like uh, when like we had like most of our data consumers are from the machine learning and the uh, AIP, so they wanted some data to be uh, landed in a target where it has like better integrations with whatever the tools they are being used. So that's when we thought of like having this uh, target as a data lake architecture. So in our data lake architecture, so we have built a metadata architecture um, as like uh, we have like separate uh, certain layers that like bronze, silver, and uh, gold layer. So we segregate this each layers because to like um, uh, like uh, calibrate the data lineage. So let's say like if you have any issues in the silver layer with the data, so you can like uh, go back your bronze layer to see like what exactly your uh, data was actually before the transformation, and then you can reprocess the data again into the silvers and all those things. So this has really helped us a lot. And to complete this project, so we have worked on like multiple tech stacks. So we primarily used PySpark for the coding of ETL transformations. And we have used uh, EMR serverless as a platform to run this uh, PySpark application. And then we have used uh, Jenkins and Terraform for the CI CD pipelines and for the resource management on the AWS cloud service. And uh, also, yeah, so the other aspects of the thing like uh, we use. Okay, uh, help me to understand one thing. You told that there was very old project which was built uh, using Spring Boot, which was streaming the data. Okay. And now you are creating something like Data Lake, where you are, I, as far as I uh, understood, that you are again streaming the data. Then why this migration activities you are made? What was the problems uh, which your team was facing in the older project where the streaming was done using Spring Boot, and uh, was it not scalable? Or what was the exact problem you people were facing? So you have gone with these migrations. All right. So one of the problem with our existing project is the code maintainability. So when we expanded our team, like uh, we were in an objective to make this data more uh, easily readable. And also like uh, at some times, like it was like quite difficult to troubleshoot if there is any problem. Okay, so it was more around like code maintainability and bring the new newer code so you can ma still maintain the same business. Okay, uh, that's good. But uh, what was your source for streaming? Like was it Kafka or what, what was that? All right, so when we use this um, uh, existing pipeline, the source was actually the Kinesis. So from the Kinesis okay. chain, so we actually consume the data from a uh, uh, validation. So we basically have like multiple microservices. So one of our microservices, its job was to like pull the data from the Kinesis and do the data validation. Because like when you have validations in the data, uh, in the validation layer, okay. and then we have uh, so like your data someone was sending in your Kinesis and you were consuming it. Yes. Okay. Uh, help me to understand what is actually Kinesis. So basically Kinesis is kind of a streaming platform. 
which it helps to like uh, produce your data and then you can consume it on a real time. So basically like, uh, uh, so you probably, let's consider as like you have a producer and a consumer and whenever a, a producer sends the data, a consumer consumes it. But to decouple this process, we have something called as the streaming platform like Kinesis and Kafka in the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. So that like um, if a cons consumer is, there will be a lot of data loss. So in, in this case, streaming platform, you mean to say something messaging queue, some message brokers. So you yes. were treating Kinesis as some message broker, right? So what right. was the retention period that you were maintaining? For how long you were maintaining data in your Kinesis? Well, it was around like uh, seven days. So it was a contract like we have to consume the data within the seven days and have to like uh, keep it in our target. Okay. So in your Kinesis, when you were storing the data, what was the format in which you were storing the data? Is it JSON, Ebro, Portwork? What was the format? Okay, uh, so help me to understand. Does the Kinesis store data in the protwop or JSON, or is the consumer applications which, while reading, convert into or serialize into different format? Is it the work of messaging queue or it's the work of consumer application? Who does this serialization? So basically, the serializations happens in producer level, like when we send this data, and uh, when we like uh, try to consume this data, this is where the deserialization. Okay. Okay, uh, so so this was your source. Okay, help me to understand what you were doing in your transformation layer. Uh, middle in architecture. So where in the bronze layer, so we basically like try to, uh, so basically uh, with our project, so we didn't want, so basically even though the data is coming from a streaming platform, so that is no requirement to process the data on a real thing. So we were like proceeding ahead with a batch process. So uh, like to get the data on a batching service, so we have used uh, Kinesis Firehost. So what this Kinesis Firehost do is, on a particular interval of time, it will look for what are all the new records which has which has been coming out of this Kinesis, and it will batch the records, and it will store it in the S3 layer. So in this layer, we call it as a staging layer. So basically, our first transformation happens between the staging and the bronze, where in the staging, we might have this file format as a JSON or protobuf or any kind of file format. So we will convert this file format into a parquet file format and keep it in a raw format in this bronze layer. And between uh, bronze and the silver, so this is where uh, we explore the data and like uh, store it in a better way, which can be consumable by the gold layer. So basically, like uh, we expand, we filter, and like map the fields and all those things, and we keep this information in the bronze layer. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. silver layer, and then uh, will be like orchestrated. Okay, cool. So it's like. Previously, like you have one streaming source, but you don't need to produce your or consume your data like a streaming person. You only want to consume the data and put it into some system. Okay, cool. right. So help me to understand, like uh, in Kafka, there is key and value, right? Yes. Does uh, Kinesis also have keys and value concept? And basically, you can like, uh, so key is someone which uh, helps to uniquely identify the particular uh, message actually in the Kinesis. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, in Kinesis, is there any concept just like in Kafka? Uh, there is just topics, right? So, what is where do you actually uh, where do your consumer actually subscribe? Is there any concept of topic? Seems there will be a consumer who can like consume the message which has been published to this particular stream. Okay, help me to understand. Uh, I do understand how Kafka works. Help me to understand how Kinesis will act as a distributed streaming platform, right? Uh, when you are producing the data, there might be some partitions or something, right? How does yes. uh, one determine that which partition one message should go? How does that, that is determined in Kinesis? All right. So basically, like, it depends on the number of partitions which you actually have uh, on the Kinesis stream. So let's say, like, you have, like, a uh, try to create a hash value for each of them. In that mm -hmm. also, the data... Okay. So it's like, let's suppose I keep sending null, then it will be done into round robbing, then it will be random partition, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. Okay, help me to understand, like suppose uh, there is one team which is already sending data in your Kinesis, okay, and they are sending from last one, one year or six months. You came to, uh, like, you came as a consumer application which wants to consume their data, but they are sending many data, like suppose 10,000 of data, but you know you want to only, uh, like, apply some filters and you only want to consume certain data. How you will design your systems where you don't, where the producer don't need to create different topics or different streams, and then they have to uh, push the filter data for you. They can they can have their existing things, right? Producer can right. have existing. 
how as a consumer applications you will actually filter the data from an older topics or any streams all right so uh, like uh, there is a concept called as offset so for okay. each uh, data lands into a partition so basically like there will be a, a offset value which has to be assigned to it so it okay. has like a check checkpoints i would say maybe mm-hmm. let's say like uh, uh, like i or mm-hmm. else i can mention the data mm-hmm. from the streams or the kafka probably mm-hmm. i got that you can uh, uh, start consuming from that particular offset i am more con- uh, like let's suppose they are sending data for stores okay mm-hmm. in that stores there will be lot of a uh, lot of data but uh, out of those 10000 messages i only want to consume 2000 messages of certain stores let's suppose they are sending stores for all over india okay but you only want to uh, consume application for maharashtra maharashtra is one of the state in india right so how do you apply the filter uh, like when you are consuming the data when you uh, when you read the data from kafka how you will apply the filter so we can read the data. i'm not exactly sure because i haven't implemented that search one approach one some simple ad hoc approach will be like create the data frame filter out the data then sing apply the same right it works yeah. well but when the data is smaller uh, but uh, it's like it might not work when the data is quite huge right so that's mm-hmm. where the concepts of keys comes into picture right so when someone is uh, as a producer when someone is producing the data they will have certain logics okay mm-hmm. so they can enable uh, add some logics which can determine by using the keys that this particular type of keys if i add maharashtra in that particular key and then as a consumer application you can actually apply the same mod application uh, uh, same hash functions or something then you will get to know that this is like uh, maharashtra data from maharashtra state this is data from the uttar pradesh this is data from any other states okay so okay. it's like that uh, so cool uh okay help me to understand uh, more about your sync part once your transformation is done like you read the data from kinesis then you have applied transformation in pipes part where do you actually load your data it wants to build some uh, let's say like analytics on top of uh, sql queries or if they want to like have some tableau which is built on top of data warehouse so we try to create some uh, snowpack connections which can extract this data from this s3 bucket and can store it on a staging layer and from the store staging layer we can either have a external table or we can push it to the managed table okay cool uh so you also mentioned about airflow right, right. so uh, what is the main use of airflow in this particular applications all right so here when i spoke about like the medellin architecture so there are different layers basically like uh, the silver uh, within this etl packet so it is not just a single task so that we are like working on like multiple tasks and each task has its dependency so this is where like airflow comes into picture which helps us to orchestrate this complete workflow using the task dependency okay well help me to understand like this is just a clone jobs right where you scheduling the things Right. why you are using airflow you can use simple cron john why your team is not using simple cron john instead of airflow is there any particular reasons and what are the things that you have considered for using something like airflow not mm-hmm. using any basic cron jobs what was the reason about it all right so if you speak about like a uh, cron jobs there are like multiple providers as like even in glue we have some uh, something called as glue workflow so it also does this cron sch- scheduling of tasks and all those things but with airflow it has it provides you a lot of flexibility and to also do some uh, complex workflow management so mm-hmm. let's say like maybe if your uh, like a transformation uh, if your task dependencies are very simple it's, it just looks like a straight line so in that case obviously you can like uh, go ahead with uh, any kind of uh, glue workflows or something else like but think of like you basically have to on a daily basis you have to wait for that that completion and then you have to like uh, 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 start a particular task and all those things so also there are some concepts called like a uh, uh, task status basically so whenever there is a failure of any task within the app flow so based on the task status you can probably do like lot of uh, alerting mechanisms or like do some alternate workflows and all those things and there is a lot of flexibilities with app flow and also there is a good community support so that's why we went ahead with that cool. you mentioned about task in your flow what is task in your flow so basically task in airflow means like a, a particular job which we schedule so tasks are basically like created using the operators within uh, uh, uh dag so there are like multiple uh, operators which has been used in airflow uh, so you can use like a uh, emr job operators python operator batch operators 
or any kind of operator so so it is not you can use like any kind of operators this helps you and gives you better integrations with uh, any of the systems what is operator actually okay so operator is something maybe i would say like it provides you integrations between this upload dash and so like uh, the other thing like let's say if you are using a python operator it basically helps you to call a python function and if it is a bash operator it helps you to run your bash command on top of this atlo executors and okay, so as such mm -hmm. no, yeah. sorry to can you name some few of the operators which you have used in your application yeah in my current project we basically use uh, the emr job operators so as i mentioned like most of our transformations are running on pyspark so we use emr right so mm -hmm. to uh, submit this spark submit command we use this emr job operators and there will be like a lot of uh, python transformation uh, python functions which will be like working as a task for that we have been using this python operators and there are also like uh, certain bash commands will be running to like uh, like mm -hmm. have you used hooks in airflow uh, yes you... okay what is hooks in airflow so basically hooks are something as like it provides you the better integrations with uh, other services as like so we have used the snowflake hook uh, basically like let's say like why can't you do the same thing using some python operator or any other operator why so if you have to store the uh, connection id and all those informations in the in your code so instead of managing it in the code you can basically like uh, write every configurations for the hook and you can make the connection okay Help me to understand one thing. Let's suppose some new intern or new junior developer joined your team, okay, and he started doing processing using Airflow. How you will actually advise him or her that why you should not do processing? Airflow is not meant to do processing; it is meant to do scheduling and orchestrations. How you will actually make him make him or her understand that what right. is the actual use of Airflow? Right. i have like uh, implemented like 10 so every mm -hmm. time my schedule uh, my executor is uh, looking through this uh, dash files which is available and trying to parse it and do the scheduling and all those things so basically airflow is only meant for scheduling and if you want to process something you just have to use the other operators as like the emr or ec2 or anything if you are going ahead with the heavy operations you should never rely with the airflow okay got it heavy operations we what others like how do you make you man you more hard understand that uh, heavy operations is well one definition like how to make him aware more about airflow okay uh, so, like do you know about uh, what is scheduler help me to understand first what is scheduler in airflow uh, most of the dax will be scheduled based on this uh, cron scheduler right so meaning like the your scheduler scheduler within this airflow will look for this time and when this time runs it just initiate the job uh, within the executors so basically okay so how do you actually secure your airflow like uh, have you heard about any r r back features any other things r back r b a c okay so might you might not be uh, like installing airflow there might be other teams who might have installed for you just using it right yeah so we are basically using this mwa with the service mm -hmm. which has been provided by uh, uh, can you share your screen once yeah sure Share you need share any editor. We will try to design one system and make the font bold. Okay. Uh, let's suppose you are working for a big firm. Okay, which is making some product or selling something. Okay. Let's suppose you are working for Zomato. Cool. Zomato is a food delivery app uh, applications in India, right? Yeah. And which is recently launched there. Uh, they recently got into the stock market, right? just a few mm -hmm. months back and let's suppose you want to create a systems which takes the perspectives which is going on you going around zomato on multiple social media platform okay then your manager who is actually handling multiple software engineers or data engineers he or she wants to create one pipeline okay which can extract different things different perceptions different data from different social media platforms okay so there can be twitter one of the source you can write it down uh, let's write source okay uh let's write the source first like on the top source okay okay 
let's suppose twitter is there instagram is there then you have facebook and linkedin okay now let's suppose uh, you are working as a data engineer and you want to create one pipeline which will read data from multiple sources and then you will dump into some system so it can be consumed by some data scientist okay mm -hmm. it can who can generate some insight about it so you don't need to worry about insight you only have to create the pipeline so source is clear to you cool yes yeah now let's suppose your manager asks that let's create a pipeline or multiple pipeline or even you can design using factory pattern or any other in the symbol single pipeline itself where you can make some of the sources as a streaming source and you can make some of the sources as a batch why mm -hmm. uh, let me break it down for you because if something happening on twitter will impact zomato a lot okay facebook nowadays many young generations people are not using it right so you don't yeah. need any streaming uh, you don't need to stream data from facebook you can simply buy 24 hour or 6 hour you can do uh, read the data using api or whatever you want to design web scrapping or something like that and then you can create a bypass pipeline so your pipeline will consist of multiple things like it can be some batch pipeline some streaming pipeline okay and then you have to understand one thing that the data might be late there can be late coming data in your source what does that mean let's suppose someone has posted something and you have read the data after some time the same person will edit the post okay and mm -hmm. then you the new data will come okay all right, but, all right. uh, or uh, let me help you to break it down it's it's not late coming it's like the updated data what does the late coming mm -hmm. data means let, let's suppose when you are trying to read the data data was not available for that particular thing but at later point of time it was available oh. so how you will handle the late coming data and when you are syncing the data you should like you have mentioned you have multiple raw zones catalog zones gold zone right so you have to design your pipeline in a such a way that you should also have appended data right which some data scientist can treat as a time series data in append mode you should also have something like upsort mode like update plus insert which can be used at some bi platform like tableau power bi or any other ui tools which can see what is happening in the latest fashion okay and the data will be very very huge because okay. you are data engineer so you have to use some computing engine which can take this data and help you in doing transformations okay or okay. uh, try designing this pipeline from scratch and focus on every other part like from injections to transformations to sync even to scheduling how you will actually schedule and how will actually spin the clusters if required or you can can you do it using normal normal script like python script or something it's your choice take any cloud whichever you want to take aws gcp or azure and try designing the systems i hope the questions is clear to you yeah, if you are having any doubt feel free all right or uh, like a creator batching as well as a streaming platform it can yes any api or yeah some of the systems might provide you the download api but some of the systems might not provide you the download api okay mm -hmm. right uh, like let's suppose just for example you should be ready like there should be some api uh, in some of the system let's suppose twitter has the api which you can use to get the data but some of the system let's suppose linkedin will not have the api then you have to use some web scrapping or something else right some mm -hmm. daily cron jobs or some some scripts or something like that where you will read the hashtag or read the words or something like that and uh, let's suppose you uh, let's suppose some in your post might happen that sometimes uh, they will not add zomato there but they will be talking about zomato they will not add hashtag zomato right so what you have to do you have to yeah you have to read some post which consist of your ceo name or cto names because they will be tagging you they tagging the your company ceo or cto right like they can tag mm -hmm. the, the some post. keywords probably yeah so it's like that and even the your api you should when you are designing the api you should be ready not just with the download api you should also have some search functionality api to design like that streaming source can be any of the social platforms mm -hmm. applications where it can like a like an application 
which can uh, extract the uh, data using data using API. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, whenever if I get this data, so this probably will be okay. And I'm just doing the continuation here. Mm. So okay. oh, let me pause it here because we will be discussing not state because this type of question will not have black and white answer. Right? So we will mm. be discussing in between. Help you understand when you want to dump the data in Kafka or Kinesis, how you will actually do it. Like, have you produced any times data into a streaming platforms or have you only read it? How do you know how to push the data into Kafka? Uh, well, basically, like uh, Kafka has like uh, two different APIs, like where it can work on this uh, pull and push, basically. So I can use okay. the push to uh, send this data into this Kafka streams. Okay, so you will be pushing it Kafka via topic. the API, right? The push. Yeah. API. Okay. Yeah. I'll be putting it into mm -hmm. the Kafka topics for uh, each of the platform, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Help me to understand one more thing. Will you will be using multiple topics for multiple source or you will be using only single source so i'll try topics, to sorry. use so i'll try to use uh, multiple topics because it helps me to uh, uh, segregate like uh, the informations on each of the sources probably okay cool and you as your data it will be huge from any other source then better to use multiple topics cool. yeah please proceed yeah yeah and i'll have a spark streaming application mm -hmm. Or like, uh, so that is something called as Flink. So I haven't, I haven't worked on it, but I know that uh, Flink is like much more a better uh, uh, a better streaming platform than uh, stream, uh, stream processing platform than the Spark Energy. So mm -hmm. I will basically do the Spark streaming and uh, uh, either or like Spark streaming or Flink to process this data. And after it is being processed, so this is where the ETL uh, operations will happen. Mm -hmm. So here in the ETL operation, so I, I I would think as like how I want to segregate the amount of information. So if I speak about this uh, social media, so there will be like a lot of information about the Zomato. So there can be like, a, uh, what to say, a good post, a, a good appreciation post about, uh, about the Zomato. Mm -hmm. Or uh, let's say like if some customers had some bad experience with Zomato and they post something bad about this uh, company. Which can affect your stock stock price or something else. Like. So that we will segregate as a bad based on some keywords, and we will speak something as a neutral one. So someone is speaking about some uh, Zomato's uh, uh, like uh, IPO listing or something else. Like. So we will try mm -hmm. to segregate this as a three different type of messages, and mm -hmm. uh, after we uh, transform this, we basically ingest it into a S3 bucket or uh, any kind of data warehousing we can say mm -hmm. but uh, i wouldn't suggest like having something on the data warehousing because like uh, when we are dealing so that's my pr personal pr choice like i mean like uh, when we are dealing with the streaming data like when we are using this uh, data warehousing there will be like a lot of ingestions which will be happening so there will be like a lot of load will be happening onto this data warehouse so i would prefer to go ahead with this uh, data lake architecture and uh, it will always have a up and mode. So meaning like uh, I'll just only store the uh, data on an incremental way. I will not do the overwrite basically because I also need the historical record of this information basically. Okay. And uh, uh, the another aspect which we sp spoke about is uh, handling the late arrival records. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not exactly remembering that particular thing, but within streaming, like uh, we basically when we like uh, uh, so we basically like uh, process the data based on the event time or the processing time. So mm -hmm. let's say like if a message has arrived uh, at this time and we are putting a frame and mm -hmm. if an event is been happening between ten to ten thirty, it only takes that particular uh, it only takes the event which is happening within this time frame. And if mm -hmm. it goes beyond it, we will not be able to do kind of any kind of aggregations or something else like. But if we want to uh, also like handle the late arrival records, so we try to use the uh, event time. So the time when this event is being happened on the producer. So based mm -hmm. on that, we will try to uh, handle this in the Spark streaming and mm -hmm. we will uh, handle the late arrival records. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, this is how like basically i can like uh, uh think of like uh, mm-hmm. having a design for the spark streaming okay and also like uh, you can use uh, so as we said like for twitter and we will put it into the streaming platform okay but in scrapping also you cannot scrap whole linkedin right it's like you have to the data yes. which has a lot a uh, lot of reactions and lot of thing right then you can only do the scrapping right otherwise the scrapping yeah so basically process. built down as like this like you will have a base url let's say like linkedin.com after that you will have like something for, called as keyword equal to something as like that mm-hmm. so when we are uh, doing the web scrapping so in the uh, like uh, that you will get the information from the uh, linkedin or any kind of social platform that's a smart solution one of the smart solution okay yes. help me to understand till now you have only done s3 append but someone let's suppose some bi applications wants to use it then they have to write their own logic to show the latest data right so are you not interested to even create some pipeline from that append mode and load it into some upsert mode because some ui application will always try to show what happened what is happening in the latest time right so mm-hmm. for that they have to write their own application right they have like their own logic so mm-hmm. will you be interested to change like put it into append mode but after that have some pipelines which can change this appended appended data to some upsert data will you be interested in that mm-hmm. okay so basically i'm out which uh, based on which key i have to do the let's suppose whenever you are uh, like you have already bifurcated the data like twitter data insta data so based on that you can have certain primary key even when you are reading from api for one post when you use their download api they will have certain primary key and you can use that primary key slash twitter or something like which will create some primary key whenever there will be some created or updated we will have some created data or some updated column right so mm-hmm. you have three things now id which can act as a primary key mm-hmm. id plus source which sorry which can uh, used as a composite key which is a combination of primary key then you have something called created column you also have something called updated column and using that you have to create some uh, streaming pipeline uh, streaming pipeline where uh, you have already appended the data now you have to upsort the data now take your time no? okay, help me to understand these things like how you will actually create this pipeline from in streaming application from append to upsort all right so basically i already have this data available in this append mode so let's say like i have this uh, uh, bucket name as the gold mm-hmm. so within the bucket uh, slash uh, uh, twitter so probably i'll have all the information which has been uh, stored from this twitter uh, data actually and mm-hmm. then what i will do is so i'll basically create another etl so you want to do this upsort on a batch time right like uh, If you basically can, if you can do using streaming itself well and good otherwise you can create your designs like doing the upsort like uh, using the batch pipeline itself okay so i am just thinking of like uh, creating a batch process uh, using this etl and uh, basically like i'll have a target which is the data warehouse let's say like uh, the data warehouse is uh, redshift or snowflake and uh, what i will do is so every so basically in this etl operation so i will read the data from my source and uh, i will also like have to like uh, consider about the key which i am like considering for this particular data so as we mentioned so we probably can think of like taking this uh, event time and uh, event id and uh, based on this we will we can like try to do the join operations with this uh, data warehouse and do when if it matches with the data warehouse then we can do the update if not we can just do the insert mm-hmm. so have you heard about delta lake apache hudi or apache iceberg yes yeah the lake house architecture yeah so instead of again spinning one uh, under etl pipe batch pipeline for up, applying the upsort can mm-hmm. we use that open table format and then apply the upsort there in the same yeah stream? of course that this also a good op- option so uh, when i speak about this s3 append so i just Thought in a lake house, a lake data lake architecture. So if there is like a multiple inserts, so probably what I can do is I can like transform this into a data lake house. Uh, maybe probably a delta format, mm-hmm. and uh, 
so which uh, so basically the data lake house architecture provides us with the asset capabilities meaning like we can do the update insert and all those uh, things into this data lake house so i could have like written this uh, spark streaming applications to do the upset itself on the stream cool okay uh, streaming clear uh, let's do about the batch part like for the batch how we will proceed all right so basically if i have to like uh, define a, a batch process so i have to define like on which uh, interval of time i'm going to like trigger this uh, etl process so i'll have a spark etl batch what what will be your like how in a spark etl you again need some source right you cannot connect a spark through the api uh, like the twitter right like how you mm -hmm. will actually create a source for a spark okay so uh, you are speaking about the streaming or over here as yeah simple batch pipeline check will you okay. be using the same python application with or treat kafka as your source again or you will create a different thing itself like not use the same thing or you can use mm -hmm. the same thing uh, for just uh, making a source right because okay. uh, let's say you already have the data in kafka right mm -hmm. so uh, why like will you be interested in creating another uh, api call or you can use the kafka as a normal source and then you can create your etl package right. maybe we can think of like uh, having everything as a, as data arrives in a streaming maybe mm -hmm. we can only consider of uh, processing this in uh, facebook data in a batch so let's say like from the kafka streaming i already have the informations about this facebook mm -hmm. so i can define the offset from when i have to like consume the data mm -hmm. and i'll have this uh, spark uh, batch process so basically in the spark streaming it's uh, i mean like a uh, okay so i could have like a uh, i i don't remember exactly uh, there is something called as uh, within spark streaming uh, like uh, whenever the, the complete data processing is done it just stops this uh, spark streaming itself mm -hmm. uh, I, i don't remember it exactly so it basically it's a spark streaming application mm -hmm. but it runs as a batch process like once mm -hmm. the processing is done it just stops this application okay so after uh, in the spark streaming i can uh, basically do the same etl operations to segregate data as good bad and neutral and again i will have this in a delta format to do the upsort operation mm -hmm. cool help me to understand how you will scheduling your jobs and which particular part you will have scheduler mm -hmm. so basically like a uh, within this part like a uh, all my spark streaming applications will be always running so okay. with this case so i probably do not need any kind of uh, um, like orchestration mm -hmm. but uh, probably uh, so even this python application also it has to be running uh, up and running all the time i believe uh, so okay. it has to ingest the data on the stream on the go on the real time basically okay uh, i'm just yeah, just give me one time one minute please yeah sorry for the delay uh okay uh, yeah, no. so you were saying that your spark string will keep on running and you were saying saying something about your python uh, yeah i like... think i'm not exactly sure where i can fit this uh, orchestration zone because like uh, this application should be always be running and uh, it should be going on uh, i think there shouldn't how be you, how do you like in a streaming application you mentioned about something called serverless cmr right can't you fit uh, fit it here like run it and use serverless cmr yeah probably the for the uh, spark streaming applications i can use emr serverless as a platform to run this and uh, what about the python script 
So for Python script, I can basically run it on uh, EC2 machine. We will keep on running it. Yes, yeah. Any other place we, where you need some schedule, like some airflow schedule or something? Uh, I think uh, no need of having that because everything will be uh, up and running probably. Okay, this is the place where we have to like uh, run it. So as I mentioned, like uh, this Spark, uh, so though it is a Spark streaming, it runs as a batch. So we can probably think of like orchestrating this flow mm -hmm. using uh, a flow. And I can provide a uh, cron scheduler to run maybe like two times a day or something as like. Cool. Uh, you can switch up your uh, like stop setting the screen. Uh, help me to understand that you have written your code using Apache Spark. So you use Python or Scala? Python, Python. Spark. Okay, so what is the difference between these two API? Is there any much differences or both are same? Uh, well, basically, Spark application is being written uh, on top of uh, Scala actually. So Scala provides you a native like integrations with the Spark application. And uh, Python application is basically uh, like a, uh, what to say, uh, an abstractions on top of uh, the Spark. Cool. I am good with most of the things. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, do you have any questions or something? Uh, well, basically, like uh, I wanted to understand, like how you really uh, would like to like uh, design the streaming application. Maybe uh, I just want to know about your thoughts. See, designing the streaming applications has lot of different things. Okay, with respect to batch applications. So mm -hmm. let me help you to understand. The first thing when designing a streaming applications. What one should consider is to ask their business, what is their SLA? Even we say this is a real-time streaming platform. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that your data will be provided to business within some time, right? right. Within some or microseconds. It actually, your, your uh, applications will take some time to crunch the data and then it's provided to your business. The right. first thing is that you have to understand what is the SLA. That, that is the first thing. So SLA, you have to understand like... Uh, this is the SLA. Let's suppose they say that I want the data within 10 seconds or within okay. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or if they say that I want, I can, I'm okay with the data being provided in within one and two minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with respect to SLA, my design will change. Okay. Even for the questions which I have given to you, you should have asked these questions, SLA. Because if you have very less SLA and if you start designing something lake house, Udi, Delta Lake or something, you might not able to meet it. Okay. okay, and let's suppose, uh, and the another thing to consider is the retention time of Kafka. Mm -hmm. Okay, what happens sometimes that even the retention time of Kafka will be very, very low in some legacy uh, messaging queue or even for the new because uh, it comes with a lot of uh, lot of cost and they don't want to screw the data. Yeah. So the second thing is like how uh, I should have the retention size in pictures. The another thing is when I'm designing a streaming pipeline, uh, it's like, should I define the max offset per trigger or not? What does that yeah. mean? So let's suppose it is just an application. Even if it is a streaming application, the chances of failure is very, very high. It yes. might fail. You never know, right? There will be always some error or something in code. It's just a developer who can write, who has written some code, which might not work someday. Yes. The thing is, like you should always have max offset per trigger. Like mm -hmm. whenever you are designing a streaming pipeline, you should restrict the amount of data which you can read in your SLA. Like let's suppose my SLA is 10 seconds. So I should communicate that my, uh, I should communicate that my application, okay, my streaming applications can consume uh, 75,000 of records in 10 seconds. What okay. does that mean? That I can, I, I am not guaranteeing you that even if you send 1 lakh of data, Okay, or 12 lakh of data uh, in 10 seconds, then uh, I'm not granting you to read it because okay. my application is designed like that. Why okay. I will set the contract like this? Let me help you to understand. Because someday the data will be very, very huge. But I was saying, see, when your application will fail and if you have not uh, created some stoppage while you're reading data from Kafka or Kinesis, it might happen that data might increase 10 times, 10x times. 
okay okay or your failure might take 4 hours to solve it and you have a lot of data in your kafka topic right when you actually solve the problem and when you start your streaming pipeline it might happen that your downstream system let's suppose you are using mongodb or you are using some application some database yeah. if that day, if this much of data will come your downstream systems will be down mm-hmm. right so it's like if you can then you should set your sla that i am designing streaming solutions which can read max offset 75000 or 1 lakh of messages 1 million of requests within 10 seconds so you're getting mm-hmm. my point so the first thing is retention size the second thing is like uh, you should always have max offset trigger right uh, per trigger yeah. max offset or uh, sometimes it is possible sometimes your business might not agree the third thing is sla with respect to your sla you may, you have to design your system because if you keep applying of certain up and both the things in the same pipeline you might mm-hmm. not able to uh, follow the sla okay all right the second thing is uh, i should always have some orchestrations uh, when i say orchestration orchestration does not mean i should orchestrate my pipeline the streaming mm-hmm. pipeline orchestration does not make much sense when yes. i say i should always have let's up i should always get some calls or some notifications in case of let's suppose my sla is like i uh, i should not have lag of 5000 records or mm-hmm. i should not have lag of 10000 record i should not have 1 million of lag so i should ha- i should have some mechanisms to detect that how much message i, I have consumed using consumer application and something called you can have some prometheus uh, prometheus where you can have the graphs where the you can set the target that it, if it is increasing this much of consumer lag or something you should get some uh, calls or something right so yeah. this type of things are very much needed in the streaming pipelines there are a lot of things but you should you should consider it or even let's suppose uh, in your streaming applications uh, you have to also understand that are your business or your source applications doing some contract between the producer and consumers mm-hmm. like if the, let's suppose tomorrow producer change the schema how you will handle it or if the schema evolution is with lot more higher right then mm-hmm. you have to choose some format like you have to also understand that you have to use json or you have to use abro or you have to use protobuf so you have to choose the format with respect to that and then yeah. you can also use something called schema registry or something right so i uh, do you know about schema registry yes yeah so within kafka we have used schema registry for this uh, data validations cool like what is that so basically like uh, whenever a producer sends a data so like he uh, his schema can probably uh, evolve over a period of time and okay. maybe like a consumer can be like defined a contract as like i will only consume this five records so if in case like in future like if the producer is like removing one particular column and the consumer who is looking for that one particular column can fail actually the application can crash or fail something like that but the schema yeah. registry what it happens is it helps to validate the data and if there is any message which violates this validations it will be uh, put onto some dead letter queue or somewhere else so this these are the design things which uh, well you were also designing i was expecting this things you already done this thing right Yes. but in interview you forget about it there is something called dead letter uh, dead letter queue right yes. or there is something called schema registry so this t- type of things makes a system very robust right so yes. these are the things when you are uh, going for system design you should always have concepts uh, like you should always remember the concept whatever you have used in your project right uh, yes. and the thing is in a streaming project what will happen most of the times your streaming data will be produced by some uh, transactional systems and right. you act as an analytical system so there should be some communications you should always say in your interview that i will be communicating to my producers because they don't understand right for them they are already dumping the data why should they care about it but they should actually care when they are dumping into kafka right. like the size of uh, value should not be very very large right this should not yes. have a very nested structure so this type of things actually helps a lot like you should have the proper communication between your source and between your producers you will always do great right and then right. let's suppose if someone let's suppose you someone has created topics where your producer is producing the data and uh, you are pretty sure that no one is actually going to use this thing only mm-hmm. your team is actually going to utilize this particular kafka topic as a consumer like you can even suggest the number of partition in kafka with respect to your application so you can have multiple other parallel parallel processing and other part right so these type right. of things actually matters a lot these are small things but in interview it will help you a lot yeah sure 
thanks manoj thank you for your time and yeah uh, you are doing good uh, you have already demonstrating your all your skills and uh, hope for the best i hope uh, i am pretty sure whenever wherever you go you will do great uh, in all other companies and other uh, all the best thank you manoj yeah thank you great day.